There are some generic hashtags which you should really be using too. If you're in Tampa Bay area, for instance, um, Creative Loafing spurred on this, this Tampa music hashtag. Uh, we, we contacted all the local promoters and we, and, and we other local media outlets and said, you know, start, let's, every, let's start helping each other. Every time we tweet about a local show, let's use Tampa music. And it's picked up and it's really taken off. So if you're a local musician, if you want people, our, our website, sealtampa.com slash music, displays every twi twi Twitter message with uh, Tampa music as a hashtag. So you can be uh, basically putting content on our website today in real time just by using a hashtag. And we want that to grow. We want to get every website that talks about music uh, locally to do that. Uh, so, so use that as much as you can. You'll, you'll have people finding your stuff that you don't even know about. Um, just out of curiosity, has anyone um, done any virtual performing, like in Second Life? Um, or are you aware of that? There's some really cool, um, over here. There's some really good music going on. I think this is a little beyond our scope, but there's some cool things. Like if you're a musician and don't want to get out of the house, you can plug into the internet. <laughs> well, that's a, not that many of them. But there are a lot of people that do that, and actually they earn some money on there. They can trade their games. People tip them and listen to these shows, and your audiences are, are people from all around the world. And also now, uh, live streaming events, it has, in the last six months, become went from being very difficult to very easy to do. If you have a MacBook or any laptop with a camera on it, you can sign up to about half a dozen websites that will let you for free live stream anything. So if you're a musician, you're doing some sort of instrument performance, sign up with one of those services, put your laptop on stage with you, and tell your fans about it. And they can watch the performance from their house. Um, I haven't seen really anybody locally do that yet, but people are starting to do that in New York and in San Francisco, and I think it's going to catch on. Let's do it tonight. Yeah. I think we're opening it up to questions. Questions. I have a question. Oh, well. <laughs> 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 uh, say I love it. I love it. I love it. I love Is Dig uh, a potential tool for promoting music? Do you have any experience with it? And if so, how would you use it? I guess I'll answer because I might know the most about Dig. Uh, yeah, it has the potential. You'll see there's not a lot of music making it to the top of Dig. Uh, because Dig started off as, as a techie, a uh, place where techies put links, and it still is predominantly that. So uh, now there's a lot of celebrity stuff that makes it up there too. Um, I don't see a lot of music stuff getting up there. Um, I would not say don't try it, but it's it's not easy to get stuff on the top of Dig. There are dastardly ways to do that, which I don't recommend. Um, so my, my short answer is uh, Dig is. is Worthwhile, but it's really hard to get anything music related up there unless your name is Britney Spears or Madonna or something. Yeah, maybe a group of other other music bloggers try to uh, create like a little group who would dig each other's post and had zero success with getting anything. Anymore. I had a little bit of traffic from StumbleUpon. I mean, just not anything sort of worth writing home about, but anything you can tap into to bring visitors to your site, you know, why not? We, we do studies uh, at Creative Loafing pretty much on a weekly basis of where our traffic's coming in from the social networks. And all the things, the stumble ponds, the deliciouses are, are this on the graph, and Facebook is this. So Facebook is where everybody is going. Uh, it's where all the eyes are. It's where the herd is. Um, spend your time, and Twitter too. Spend your time on, on I, I would suggest spend your time on the big ones and, and get your stuff out there on the big ones and worry less about the small ones because it's, it's harder to get traction. Yeah. 200 plus million people on Facebook, so, yeah. You know, I just want to say that I hear a lot of people, uh, like mm -hmm. a lot of my clients, say, well, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to start with one thing. I'm just going to start with one thing and then I'll build upon it. And I say, great, well, let's actually start with one thing strategically, but what that one thing doesn't mean just Facebook or just Twitter or just YouTube. Because really, I mean, if you think about it, if you're creating content of some kind, you have something to say, <coughs> really limit yourself by saying I'm just going to use it in one place and you can use these all of them simultaneously to drive traffic to your you know your personal website to find out more about you, your music, your shows or anything. So really just being able to knowing if you're creating a piece of content, you use it in tandem in these different places. Yeah, I think these sort of technologies or applications are the most powerful when they're integrated. You know, if you're keeping a blog and then you're using Facebook to share that blog post with your friends and that blog post has a video embedded in it from YouTube. 
I mean, there's a synergy here. They all work well. And, and blogging is important. We haven't talked about blogging, but blogging is, is a great way to just uh, disperse information to your fans. But again, try to think open. Don't think about creating a little castle where your content lives and then people will come to it because they won't go over the moat. You've got to get your stuff out there. You've got to, you've got to talk to Creative Loafing or React or local media uh, people and say, I've got a blog, will you post it? And you know we're going to say yes. We're going to say yes before you get it out of your mouth because we're hungry for content. So if you're a musician, if you're an artist, if you're willing to put the time in to produce content, to promote yourself, there are outlets out there to get it out in front of a lot of eyeballs. You just have to, you have to make that first move. That's retweeting and getting your friends in Facebook to, to share it uh, another time. Is sort of what will make that go huge. We have a comment over here from our keynote speaker from earlier, Peter Rhodes. Um, I just wanted to, this is a fascinating talk, and thank you, all of you. Uh, these are pretty important things. They're absolutely right in the, uh, being generous with yourself is the most important thing I've seen. Every band that had success is the one that stepped forward and gave of themselves. Even if it's a question of just giving out music, it's also a question of giving out information about you, your story, and making yourself human. But I had a new one for you guys, because the internet is actually smarter than anyone, everyone in this room. We started a forum, and it's just a place where people who are two more fans could go and talk about it, ask questions, make a little community of themselves. They started something on their own, a review swapping section. Once their music made it up on iTunes, there's always a space for anyone to go in and review that album. So they started reviewing it, and then they would go to the forum and say, hey, I just reviewed your album. And then that person who's also on the forum will say, wow, that's cool, I'll review yours. And then it became a swap, where people said, I will review your album if you review mine. So all of a sudden, the actual reviews in iTunes are themselves because the more reviews you have, the higher you're going to bubble up on the search engine, the more hits you're going to get, the more albums you're going to sell. Especially if you've got a name like The. There's a name like The. You're never going to crack the top 100 search results on the word The unless you've made some sales or have some activity. So even, even the stores themselves can become part of your community-based art, and you are that community. One last thing. You're all also rock stars, whether you know it or not. You're in this industry. Share that glamour. Take the time to write back somebody and say, hey, I was searching for my band name. I was eco surfing, and I typed in the name of my band, and I saw you mention us in your blog. Thank you. And then they'll go, oh my gosh, this is what uh, Julia was saying earlier. That glamour is going to turn them into an evangelist for you. And that is the heart and soul of viral marketing. Thanks. Thank you, Peter. Anyone else? Hopefully from the center of the room. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> All right, um, he's going to scream. Have you, is there any tools out there that help you send text messages to a large group of people on your cell phones? SMS type of text messaging? To tools uh, as in uh, on way web. ways to help manage like your list of who you're sending text to? Stuff exactly. Like that? Yeah, um, Jordan. Yeah. Jordan, Jordan Oppo handles our text blast for a little thing. I don't know if I didn't answer this question. Thank you. There are a couple ways you can do it. One of them is a free service called UPOC. It's UPOC.com. I know we've had, um, I was able to grow a list of a few hundred people there. Currently, Creative Loafing is using a local company called Agile Communications. And, um, We've grown our lists to about 3,000 people now, and we've had it broken down by people who are interested in movies, or food, or beer, or wine. Um, so there are definitely companies out there, and there are even local companies who are able to do that. They might charge you something uh, like a monthly fee to do that, but there are free web-based services that will do it too. Epoch is one of many, I'm sure.